You're listening to an archived Cabral Concept podcast. After listening to this show, check out the most up-to-date podcasts available at stephencabral.com slash podcasts or search directly on iTunes. And now, welcome to the Cabral Concept, where board-certified naturopath and integrative health practitioner Dr. Stephen Cabral shares how he was diagnosed at the age of 17 with a life-altering illness and given no hope for recovery. It was only after studying and traveling all over the world did he discover how to combine ancient Ayurvedic healing practices with state-of-the-art naturopathic and functional medicine to fully rebalance the body and re-energize it with life. It's time to discover how to get well, lose weight, and finally feel alive again. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. Really happy to have you with me here today. Excited as always when I get to talk straight exercise, straight fitness for the day. Uh, you know, excited too because I know how many personal trainers, I know how many health coaches are listening right now. And so I believe this is going to help them and you create better programs for either your clients or yourself personally. And so one of the big things I like to talk about is this, is that a lot of people mistake, and this isn't going to be the whole context of the show, but a lot of people mistake doing cardio with actually training their legs in terms of using resistance or weights or even body weight. Now, I've talked about this on a previous show, so you have to go back and check out that on previous Training Thursday, which I always recommend. Try to go back. If you can listen to one extra Cabral concept a day, you can go back and listen to the previous shows. But by training cardio, after about 12 weeks of really getting into your treadmill or getting your running outside or doing your biking or your elliptical or your rowing, whatever you like for cardio. I'm not going to get into that today. But that after that period of time, you're really done working your legs from a growth-based perspective, from an adaptation-based perspective. Really what you're doing now is you're working your heart and lungs because the first thing that's going to give out after 12 weeks is essentially your ability to go longer or go faster. And that's really not muscular-based from an endurance-based perspective. That's heart and lungs. So what we're talking about is now your legs aren't getting the benefit of being the metabolic powerhouse that they really are. So you have to understand that your hip joint, if you touch the top of your hip, if you follow your rib cage down and you go underneath what we affectionately refer to as the love handles, for most people, we want to call it the obliques, under there is something called your iliac crest. That's your hip bone. Okay. Now, if you go all the way down to your kneecap, well, that right there. That is just one bone. Basically, if we were looking at from that knee all the way up to our hip, that's your femur, okay? One bone is in that leg. That means all of that is muscle, your glutes, your quads, which are the muscles in the front of the leg I'm going to be talking about today, the inner thigh, which are the adductor muscles or the adductor complex. Then we have the outside of the leg, opposite of the inside, and that's more the IT band, okay? It's the vastus lateralis or vastus lateralis. That's part of the quadricep. And then behind that, we have the the hamstring. Now, the hamstring is also a complex of muscles as well. So those are muscles though, all right? No other part of your body really has one bone. Yes, I know your upper arm does, but not that much mass around it. That's why typically the estimates are about 60%. 60% of all the muscle in your body is between that kneecap and up to the glutes. That means that that's where about 60% of the muscle caloric burn goes to, okay? Okay. That is, if you're activating those muscles, you're going to boost the metabolism. So what does that mean? Well, that means that every day you're at the gym, depends on how many days, of course, you're at the gym. But if you're at the gym three days a week, or you're doing your workouts three days a week for resistance training, they really should be full body exercises. And two of those exercises I want to explain today should be two very specific types of leg exercises. Now, I know people do leg days and they do upper body days. That's okay. It's okay. I'm not going to go into all of that today if you're training at least four to five times a week, okay? Because you wouldn't train your legs five times a week, okay? But if you're doing three days a week and you're doing my Monday, Wednesday, Friday plan or my Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday plan, those should be full body workouts. And each of those days should really have two leg exercises in, in, in it. Why? Because if you're like the typical person, you're doing some cardio, you're doing whatever else, you train your abs and you're doing some arm work. It's not metabolic. You're not going to boost your metabolism. Your body, again, if you want to see your abs, train your legs. I I know I've never said that before, but it's the truth. You want to see your abs, you want to get a more defined upper body, train your legs. And the reason is you need to burn body fat. You need to light up that furnace in your body. You need your body to say, we need more fuel, which are calories. And when you don't overeat more calories, well, you are going to burn up the body fat that you have in your body, especially if you're getting adequate rest, 
adequate hydration, adequate protein, amino acids, uh, adequate vitamins, adequate minerals, like all that, right? You need to get your good stuff, uh, but you're not overeating. So now though, we need to fire up that furnace. So here's what I want you to do is I want you to focus on those three full body workouts per week. And again, let's say you're doing a Monday, Tuesday, take off Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, take off Saturday, and maybe do like a circuit or fun workout on Sunday. Okay. Well then, yeah, you could do, you could split up your upper body if you wanted to. That would be totally fine. Again, depends on your goals, but your average person is going to do best with full body workouts. That means you're going to do, I've talked about this before, but I'll I'll give you a quick update again on how this works. You're going to do a pressing exercise, whether for your shoulders or your chest. Then you're going to do a pulling exercise, whether it is a a lat pull down or a row, essentially working the opposite of a shoulder movement or the opposite of a chest movement. I've talked about this before in the past. Check out previous Training Thursday shows, all right? But what you need to then focus on are two leg exercises, all right? The leg exercise. So in addition to leg is just a, a core based exercise so a chop of some variation or some type of ab-based exercise, okay? So now the leg, though, this is what we need to focus in on because even if you just train these two leg exercises, you're going to get more than how much? 60% of the results because the greatest amount of results come from working those glutes, which are the largest muscles in your body, and then firing up your hamstrings, okay? Which typically are very weak on people, which leads to lower back issues, okay? Here's where we get into it now. You need to choose complementary exercises, and that means a push exercise for legs and a pull leg exercise for legs. I'll make this really easy for you. It's push and pull. That's it. You need to create balance in your body. When you're doing a push exercise for legs, what are you working? You're working the muscles that you can essentially see in the front of your body. You're working mainly your quadriceps. Yes, yes, I know. I can hear all the personal trainers and strength coaches now. There are other muscles involved. I know that. But just for today's show, let's say the main muscles you're working, okay, are going to be those quadriceps. All right. We'll talk about how the glutes get activated with both. Now, for the pull exercises, you need to work the hamstrings, which are the muscles in the back of the leg that most people are weak on. It's leading to knee-based alignment issues when your hamstrings are weak. That's why we need to do more hamstring-based work, okay? We're going to fix that today. All right. So now, how do we figure this out? Really simple. There are a group of exercises that are called push-leg exercises, all right? That means they are knee-dominant. That means that that exercise focuses more on the muscles of the quadricep that attach to the knee. And then we have pull exercises. And those pull exercises are called hip dominant exercises that focuses on the muscles on the back of the leg, like the hamstrings that connect up to the hips or the glutes. Okay. So how does this work? Very simple. We choose one knee dominant push exercise and one pull hip dominant exercise. Now, let's get into the the action steps, right? The nitty gritty. So now we're going to choose some of my favorites to do. Now, my favorite would be this. A knee dominant push exercise for the legs would be a front squat. So simple to do for every person, even the people with knee issues, even the people who say, I can't squat, all those people. All you're going to do is put a bench behind you at the gym. That's it. Or if you're at home, you're going to use a chair or boxes. And you are going to put two dumbbells on top of your shoulders, holding the handles, put the end cap of one dumbbell on resting on the anterior deltoid, which is the front of shoulder and one in front of you. Okay. Or just hold a kettlebell up to your chest, like a goblet squat. And you are going to sit down with your hips moving first. You're going to sit back on that bench or on the chair or on the boxes, and you're going to stand back up. That exercise is called a front squat. It is great for people with lower back issues, everybody, because with a front squat, you don't lean forward as much with the upper body, which means less what's called vertical flexion. You're not leaning forward as much from the spine. So if you have all sorts of back issues, well, then this is an easy one to do. That's also going to train your abs, train the core, work those quadriceps to a greater degree. Now, does it work your calves? Do you get some hamstrings in there? Do you work your glutes? Of course, absolutely. The deeper you get, the more the glutes get involved. But you're going to work those quads and you're going to sit back so your knees do not flex forward over your toes as a general rule. Amazing exercise. When you come and work with us in our Boston studio, again, I, the people I listen to this in Australia, I know that you're not coming to Boston work at our studio, but I always like to give you exactly what my team and I of personal trainers do. So you would actually go through a workout with us, which is called a foundational based program for 12 weeks. And we switch the exercise program every four weeks. So your first program, you're learning to do front squats, which is teaching you how to stabilize, keep your knees in one position sit down, stand up. You need to know how to do that before getting more advanced. And then we pair that later in the workout 
what's, what's called a Romanian deadlift. This is like the exercise that if you didn't train another exercise for legs, you should probably do this one. Now, you need to do it carefully. You need to do it with good form so that you don't round your lower back. You need to keep your eyes looking forward. You need to sit back with your hips first. Your hips move first, not your knees, right? Not your upper body, but your hips move back as, and you can play with it. Try to sit back to a wall. I teach this actually on a really old video from like 10 years ago of how to do a Romanian deadlift, but you don't have to watch my video. You can just go to YouTube and say how to do a Romanian deadlift, how to do a Romanian deadlift. Why don't I, you know what? Let's see if I can get you a video of this today. My team's going to love that. I'm giving them more work, but how to do a Romanian deadlift. Now you could do how to do a front squat, how to do a million things, right? But let's, let's teach you how to do a Romanian deadlift with good form. So you can do a sit back towards that wall. You're going to learn good form. You're going to do that. Why? It works your hamstrings. It works your glutes and it works your lower back and upper back as you pull back at the top as a secondary muscle group as well. So you're getting, you're getting so strong through what's called the posterior chain or posterior chain. Now, why is that important? Because most people sit all day. Let's face it. Desk jobs, sitting down at home, whether it's in your car commuting, we just sit down and those muscles on the hamstrings get tight. Okay. And they also get weak. So now what happens is our glutes get weak, our hamstrings get weak. It tightens up our lower back. All right. We're sitting at a 90 degree angle with our legs. It tightens up those hamstrings. Now Romanian deadlift actually stretches your hamstrings while strengthening them at the same time. It's an amazing corrective exercise. So good. And again, the first week or two, you might only be able to stretch down like an inch or two because you just have no mobility through your hips, no flexibility through your hamstrings. That's okay. Rome wasn't built in a day, as they say, right? This is just a work in progress. Some clients, they can't even do it without rounding their back. So what do we do? Well, we cue them. Pull the shoulder blades back. Sit back towards the wall. If you fall back, that's okay. The wall's right behind you. We're just going to keep working on this until you wake up those hamstrings and stop using your quadriceps for everything, okay? That's the front squat. So those are a great pair. So what would a workout look like? Well, you would do something like this. You would do a chest press, a standing chest press. So you're staying on your feet. And then you would pair that maybe like with a superset with a front squat, okay? You do those exercises back to back for two to three sets. Okay, now your next superset, you might do, let's say you just did a chest press. So let's say you're going to do a one-arm row, okay? So you do a one-arm row with a dumbbell or with cables, however you want to do it. And then you would pair that with a Romanian deadlift. Super simple. You did your push exercises first. Again, there's so many different ways to pair these. You could do push-pull for upper and lower body. Uh, but with this, I just did two push. Now you're ending your, your workout with all pulling exercises to work on your posture, pull everything back, work the whole backside of your body, finish off with that. And that's a great way to do it. So then at the end of the workout, again, you can do core-based exercises. You can do intervals for fat burning. You can do whatever you want, but that's a simple exercise right there. Chest press, front squat, one arm row, a row of whatever you'd like and Romanian deadlift. Then at the end, do some core work or do some intervals. Super simple, but you know what? Highly effective. And the more fancy you get, the further away you get from that, the worse you're going to be. Honestly, all the, the veterans in the fitness industry like myself, you all go through a phase in your career where you're doing fancy stuff. Like we have people, you know, jumping on one leg and, you know, touching their nose and all sorts of different things like that. But once you get back to it, you understand that the fundamentals, the fundamentals are what gets results every single time. Now, however, between those two exercises I just gave you, there are hundreds of variations. So it doesn't mean your workouts have to be boring. You can get things, you can spice things up. Plus you have dynamic warmups. You have, if you're doing triceps, you can add a third exercise that, that makes things a little, a little bit more interesting, whether you're doing a Turkish half getup or, you know, you're doing other things like that. Those are great. So besides the front squat and RDL, you need more variation. You're doing two more, you're doing one or two more workouts per week. Remember at least twice a week strength training. You have to do that. If you're not doing it now, you have to get in twice a week. You really do. It's not just about body transformation. It's about keeping your bones strong. It's about keeping your metabolism strong, about staving off sarcopenia, osteopenia. You don't want your muscles and your bones to start falling apart as you age. And that's exactly what they do. They literally begin to break down and deteriorate if you don't use them. And you don't want that because it's too hard to get it back. Better to keep it, not as easy to get it back. Can you get it back? Yes. If you're 78 years old, listen to this podcast right now, which I know that there's people 78 listening to, not too late. Check out the research. About 13 miles down the road for me, Dr. Wayne Westcott did right at the YMCA. Uh, Amazing, amazing work. Had him come in as a speaker when I used to consult for health clubs in four different states, in New York and Rhode Island and Massachusetts and New Hampshire. A great guy. Two strength training workouts per week. 
two sets. That's it. That's all they needed. And they saw remarkable results. So it's never too late. Start doing it now. The best time to start was yesterday. Today's a really good day too. Tomorrow's not bad. So (laughs) just get started. All right. So what are some other exercises you can do? Well, so just keep in mind all squats. And again, I can hear it now. Well, I can't do squats because my knees. That's true only because you have alignment issues right now or you're not doing them properly. Check out another video I did literally a decade ago called How to Squat. It's on YouTube. How to Squat. I'm going to type that in. My team's going to try to link it up. So if you go to stephencabral.com forward slash 727, I'm going to try to find some really old school videos of me. You'll probably laugh because it's me 10 years ago and you'll get to see me taking, I was the health and fitness expert for diet.com and I did a lot of their videos, like a video or two a week, which are great. I mean, I love them. They really do to this day. They're hilarious, but they're definitely a different me. I don't know if I was, you know, not, I did, didn't quite reach, get into my element back then, but that's okay. We're all a work in progress. I'm still a, I'm a, I'm a big work in progress uh, to this day. So we're all moving forward. But a squat and exercises, again, you can even have meniscus tears. You can have all sorts of things going on. And unless your doctor, which again, they have to be a, an osteopath or they have to be someone that is um, or an orthopedic based doctor as well that says, don't do it for you not to do it because usually we can fix these things. We can correct these things. Again, like I said, even with meniscus base tears and so on and so forth, you might just want to do more hip dominant for right now. But any type of squat will work great. A great thing to pair with a regular squat as well is a backwards lunge. Now a backwards lunge works your quad. Yes, it does. But you're going to get deeper into your hamstrings and your glutes by doing a backwards lunge. And the reason is you're going to be able to sit back into your glute and your glutes are going to be the muscles that help to decelerate the weight. Okay. Why does that matter? Well, as you're lunging backwards, the front leg that stays in front, actually that hip, it's hip dominant because that hip, it's called eccentric work. As you're lowering base down, that hip is taking the weight. Okay. Not the quad as much the hip, because as you move forward, your quad decelerates you like in running and all those basic things. But when you do a backwards lunge, you're decelerating into the glute. Now that allows the glute to take more work. It is amazing for glute development. Now, let's say that you don't really care about building up your glutes. Fine. But your glutes are still the largest muscle in your body. Work the glutes. They, they start to sag over time because they're not turned on. You need to work them, wake them back up, and it's also going to help boost your metabolism. Okay. Amazing exercise. You can do, again, all these can be done first body weight. Recommend body weight first so you have control of your body. Then you can start doing things like, well, Bulgarian split squats. You can do backwards lunges. You can do it with kettlebells. You can do it with sandbag. You can, however you want. Sky's the limit, right? Because we have so many different variations, that's what makes the workout spicy. But in the end of the day, what are we really doing? Well, we're doing a squat, we're doing a Romanian deadlift, we're doing a lunge, and we're doing our last one right here, which is called a step up. Now, a step up is a real hybrid that works knee, that's knee dominant and hip dominant. Why? Well, the higher you go in the step, the more you get into the glute. Why? Well, as you come back down, you need to decelerate. And if you don't just let your body go, well, you start to decelerate deep and the, and the glute gets stretched. As the glute stretches, you work more of the glutes. And as you push back up, it becomes more knee dominant because the knee has to stabilize and the muscles around the quads have to drive up as well. Again, the whole time I know that your calves are working and all the other muscles, great, fantastic, good. So we're going through the anatomy. Now, what's a good one to pair with the step up, right? Because we have front squat, RDL, squat, backwards lunge, step up. Another amazing exercise is a hybrid of the Romanian deadlift and that's called a reach. So you literally reach forward in front of you by using a band or even just body weight, and then you pull back, okay? you. Why does the reach matter? Well, it's a little bit more advanced than remaining deadlift, but as you reach forward in front of your body at like a 45, well, the hips have to sit back further. Why? Because you are displacing your weight forward, and whenever your weight goes forward, you need an equal counterbalance, right? This is physiology. This is actually physics. You need to counterbalance backwards, which means your glutes have to go way back behind you to counterbalance. Now, if you add a dumbbell to that, now the glutes have to go back even further. You need to sit into those hips. And so it's amazing, amazing as an eccentric-based stretch and as a great hip-dominant exercise. So knee-dominant, I'm going to count that as my step up, something different than a squat, and then I'm going to give you the reach. All right, my last pairing I want to give you, there are more, but my last pairing I want to give you is an Olympic deadlift. A lot of people get confused between a Romanian deadlift, which is basically, it's not straight leg. The the knees can be bent up to about 20 degrees. Olympic deadlift is a bent knee. So essentially you're squatting down, you're doing a squat, but the weight is coming from below the knees or is coming from below the shoulders. When you put weights around your chest or shoulders, that's a squat. When you're pulling weight up from the ground, now you're looking at an Olympic deadlift. The easiest way to think about this Is in the Olympics, the barbell's on the ground. You grip the barbell and you pick it up. That's a deadlift in the Olympics. Now, 
it doesn't change if you were to use dumbbells instead, right? Or if your hands are by your side and it's body weight. It's still a deadlift. It's just called an Olympic deadlift. It's not a squat. Squat, weight, shoulder loaded, okay? Olympic deadlift, same form, same technique. We're not talking about Romanian. Romanian's basically straight leg, stretching the hamstrings. This is more knee dominant, which means the knees are bending. It's a squat, but the weight is low, all right? That's very confusing. Personal trainers get confused. Even a lot of health coaches and gurus call it a dumbbell squat when the weights are low. It's not. That's a deadlift. Because again, if you switched out those dumbbells for a barbell, you'd be now looking at an Olympic deadlift. It's, it's the same exact thing. It matters because the weight is low and you're, you're basically pushing from the ground up, all right? It's semantics, though. It's semantics. Your knees are bent. You're coming down to a right angle. Now, a great pairing with that, a little bit more advanced, okay? A little bit more advanced. But for now, you can even just do a move from yoga called the Brave Warrior. Now, in fitness, we call this a good morning. You hold a weight or you hold a barbell either on your shoulders or you can hold a dumbbell to your chest and you just sit back with your hips trying to create what's called like a tabletop. The Brave Warrior in yoga is actually a one leg stretching back behind you, both arms in front, creating the tabletop. But either way, what you're doing is you're working your hamstrings by doing a good morning. So let's call this a good morning for what it is. And you're holding maybe a dumbbell to your chest and you're keeping your eyes forward and you're doing a Romanian deadlift move, but the weight's in front, a little bit different displacement, a little bit more lower back as well. So master the Romanian deadlift first, master the reach, then you can do this thing called the good morning. There are so many different variations. They're absolutely incredible, but here's the deal. You have to do a push-pull in your full body workouts. Your treadmill, your biking, your elliptical, your rowing, all of that does not count as leg work. It doesn't. Yes, your legs need to be sore for the first 12 weeks of running or biking or whatever. After that, you've adapted, okay? You've adapted. It's now time to boost your metabolism through doing somewhere between, let's say, eight reps and 15 reps for most individuals. Yes, you could do five. Yes, you could do 20. But somewhere between, let's just say, eight and 15, two to three sets of each of these exercises, two to three times a week. If you do that, you will transform your metabolism, which will transform your body, which will allow you to eat more carbohydrates, which will make you happier. <laughs> In the bottom line, doing fitness makes you happier from so many different aspects. But you know, seriously, beyond that, it's going to strengthen your knees. You're not going to have the same knee issues. If I ever start to experience a little bit of that pain on the inside of my knee, I know that I have not been doing enough hamstring work. I do about two weeks of more Romanian deadlifts, knee pain gone. Honestly, gone. It's like my telltale. Like, oh, you haven't been doing your hammy work as much as you should. Too quad dominant. Too much of this, this, and this. Too much biking, whatever it might be. I need to get back to that. And that's what I do. I do some two-legged and I do some one-legged exercises for those. So you will honestly, you'll, you'll help with your lower back. will help your flexibility. You'll build back up your glutes. Body's going to look better. You look better in pants, dresses, all that good stuff. You really will. It, it's something that you have to do. It really is. This is your body. Your body is what carries you through life. If you feel strong, your mind is strong. When I miss working out for a week, two weeks, whatever it might be, I'll tell you, I feel weak. It affects my mindset. It's a different state. And if you're like, well, I don't know if it affects me or not, you need to get back into it. When you've been training for six weeks, two to three times a week, meaning like every other day, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, you will transform both your body and mind. Now, again, change your body, change your life. Start with your body. It's what you can control. And I didn't give you complicated workouts, right? Chest press, squat, row, Romanian deadlift. That's it. You can fat, add in the fancy stuff after that. That's workout number one. Workout number two, shoulder press or shoulder work. Okay? Some type of squat or step up. Then you're going to do a lat pull down or pull up or chin up. And then you're going to do a backwards lunge. I just gave you four workouts. Are they fancy? No. Are they effective? Absolutely. They're five-star workouts. Those are five-star workouts. If you want more details, again, this is not a pitch for my book. It's called A Man's Guide to Muscle and Strength. It's for both men and women. You can find it on Amazon. I make about a dollar. Honestly, that's it. That's, that's how much you make for a, book, for a book. All that work, one year of my best workouts, I get a dollar for it. But it's not about that. It's not about making money. It's about, I mean, honestly, it really is about helping people transform their life. That's so much more, so much more beneficial. You get so much more out of that, honestly, in the long run than making $2 a book or $3, whatever it might be. So that's a great book. You can also get it on my website. I um, actually will mail you a signed copy 
from my website or of course you can get it from Amazon. doesn't matter to me. But again, that was not for me to sell my book. I want to make things as easy as possible for you. The book is, I think, like a whole, I don't even know how much it costs, like $15, whatever it might be. But the workout I just gave you is just as good. Chest press, squat, row, RDL. Shoulder press, step up, lat pull down or chin up, and then a backwards lunge. That's it. Super simple, straightforward. You can develop more workouts from around that. That that will really be good. Again, it will strengthen your bones, boost your metabolism. It's going to allow you to eat more carbohydrates. And everything stems from there, right? It bounces glucose. And, and it's just, you have to do that. I don't want to keep overstressing it, but the truth is that people are not doing it right now. They're focused on these tiny muscles in their arms. Your arms will get stronger. You pick up some heavy weights for a squat, deadlift, step up, your arms will get stronger. They will get more toned. And you'll actually see those muscles because you're burning the body fat, which comes from training the legs, which boosts the metabolism. So I'm going to keep it at that today. Hopefully that was helpful. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please, if you could do me a favor, share this show with just one other person. If we can start transforming lives together, if we can start building up this community, that to me more means more than anything. Thank you so much. Take care. I'll see you tomorrow on our Friday Review. Before you go, I wanted to ask you this question. What if I could teach you in just a couple of hours how to transform your thyroid, hormones, adrenal, cholesterol, blood pressure, blood sugar, weight loss, energy, mood, brain, pregnancy, anti-aging, or many other health-related issues? After 20 years in private practice, after seeing and overseeing a quarter of a million client appointments, I sincerely feel I have the real-world data and have found the answer you've been searching for. So what I've done is spent hundreds of hours of my own time refining what you need to know in order to uncover your underlying root cause health issues and then begin to rebalance the body and bring it back to a state of robust health and wellness. I'm going to teach you exactly what I do in my private practice so you can understand how you got here and now what you need to do in order to heal. You'll receive all of the important success checklists, protocols, and even ways to customize it to make the program fit your busy life. And you'll get all of this at a fraction of the price. Let me save you the time, money, energy, stress, and frustration of not knowing what to do next. Instead of reading dozens of books on the topic and seeing multiple practitioners, I will condense everything that you need to know in just a few hours of video tutorials that you can watch and listen to anywhere. Together, we will make this healing process an enjoyable one that you can take with you for the rest of your life. I wish you all of the best of health and happiness, and I hope to be able to guide you on your healing journey through my health results accelerators. Simply choose the health and balance you're currently suffering from, and by the end of today, you'll know what went wrong and how to get well again. I guarantee it. For details, head over now to stephencabral.com forward slash courses.